back again and this recording will focus on Kerberos Vault. As you may know, Kerberos Vault is part of the enterprise suite and it will help you to centralize your storage, bring your own storage and uh, build integrations and extensions. So as you already know is that Kerberos Vault is part of the Kerberos ecosystem and more specifically the enterprise suite where they leverage still the capabilities of the Kerberos agent. So Kerberos agent is the backbone, it's really the foundation of the entire Kerberos ecosystem and also in the Kerberos enterprise suite. So what can you find in the Kerberos enterprise suite is already mentioned. You'll find uh, different solution services that you can connect to each other and then build a scalable, more distributed video surveillance or video analytics system. So in other recordings, we'll discuss more Kerberos Agent and Kerberos Factory in detail, as well the Kerberos Hub, which is your centralized one uh, single pane of glass uh, for your entire video landscape. In this recording, we'll focus on Kerberos Vault. We will show you what are the benefits, why should you use this, and why did we implement it in the, in the first place. So once you're ready to discover more about Kerberos Vault, I would invite you to select or go to our public page as we show here, go to the product section and select the, the relevant service. So for today, we'll talk about Kerberos Vault. So what you immediately will see, and that's what we try to um, make sure that every solution in the Kerberos Enterprise suite looks the same, behaves the same, uh, so that is quite predictable and uh, the user experience is, is great. So it's a UI that allows you to configure your storage layer, but also the way of how you can integrate and extend your own services, for example, machine learning or computer vision, uh, so that you can implement those use cases. So Kerberos Vault is an open system that will allow you to integrate and, and to extend your own use cases. Central within Kerberos Vault is we have the concept of bring your own storage, which means that you can bring edge storage or cloud storage. Um, this could be AWS S3, any S3 compatible protocol like MinIO or uh, Ceph, uh, Ceph cluster will also work. We have Google Cloud Platform integration and, and so on. So you can really decide to bring edge cloud storage or even combine them. And then we are talking about something with chaining, on-demand forwarding, which means that you can store 24 and seven recordings at the edge. You can build an integration to detect a specific scenario. For example, a helmet detector, um, uh, people um, which are crossing a line or should not be in a specific area because the machine is, is turning on. If a specific event, your use case is triggered, you can send the recording from the edge into the cloud. So that consumes less bandwidth than uh, just sending everything into the cloud. So these are just the three main points. There's there's more, we'll show you why um, Kerbal's Vault is, is so interesting. So central storage, bring your own storage and having the capabilities to integrate and extend is really uh, key with this service. So as already explained, you can bring your own storage. You can reuse the storage that you're already using within your company, within your enterprise, and you can deploy where you want. So at the edge or in, into cloud. Crucial thing again is extension and integration, but we'll talk more about it. And then just summarize some examples like what you can do. Uh, if you have a multi-location, you can have vaults in different um, areas different regions uh, on our planet and so on. So once you've um, dived in and digested the high level what Kerberos Vault is doing and you're convinced or you want to try it out, then we invite you to our documentation website as usual. It looks like this. A very detailed documentation on the left, you'll find the different services, solutions that we offer. And then in a similar way, you'll find the first things first page and this is just what I just explained to you. Um, feel free to have a look. Once you're ready, the getting started page is really detailed. It will explain all the different 
features and functions and the capabilities, the, the pages. So you will see and you will be able to read what you can expect from the service. So we have the ability to create providers, a couple of different providers. The list is growing. We have a way of integrating with message brokers, having the concept of chaining. We have the possibility to create accounts, to expose your recordings or to create integrations in a secure manner. And then of course we are centralizing recordings in a single place. So once you've um, looked a little bit and, and learned about Kurosalt, you might consider to go into the installation, just like Kerberos Agent and Kerberos Factory. And, and here you will find a different deployment. So what is crucial here again is we are using Kubernetes. Uh, so you can decide where to host your vaults. This could be at the edge and or in, into the cloud. So the end means that you could chain them and or would mean that for specific scenarios, you could directly store recordings into the cloud or you can just store them at the edge for any kind of use case. So depending on which kind of scenario, just like with Kerberos Factory, it might, the, the installation might be, might be different. Um, but the good news is it reuses the same technology stack as Factory. So again, this is deployed on Kubernetes and it leveraged all the different previous services that you have installed. So that's what I explained here. So uh, what we need here is we can reuse the MongoDB. We have, we need some database. We can also reuse the ingress and so on. So bottom line, we'll just need to modify the ingress of this deployment. We create an additional namespace and we, de we deploy the JAML file of the deployment into our cluster. And then magic, everything is running and we should be able to access Kuros Vault. So how does it look like? This is the landing page. Again, it looks similar to Kubernetes Factory. We sign in and boom, we're inside the web interface. So on the left, again, looks the same. We have the management step and this is where everything starts. First page is the dashboard. We'll see a brief overview of how many recordings we have in our vaults and our storage providers. These could be stored in different storage providers, by the way. And then just some key KPIs of like a number of accounts integration, less, less important, but good to see. So first things first, what we want to do is we have, uh, for example, a number of cameras, agents. So what these agents are doing, they're connected to an IP camera stream, they're recording data, but they're not, not storing it centrally. And that's actually what we want. So, to do that, to make that or create that central place, we need to set up a vault and create a storage provider. So these are different storage providers that are already uh, created. So what you can do if you don't have any, any available at the moment, you create a new storage provider and you can select the preferred storage provider you want. So you can have Google Cloud Storage, S3, MinIO, which is uh, at the edge or in, into the cloud, S3 protocol, and then also storage G, which is also an S3 um, compatible protocol. So depending on the, the connection you want, you, will, you might need to provide additional information, like for example, S3, the region access secret key. And then once you've conf uh, completed those settings, you can press the validation button. And hopefully when you have the right configuration, you should see some uh, green um, pop-up that says like successful connection. And then you know, okay, this, this works. So once you have the storage provider, you can create an account. And an account, what it actually means is this account is being used to set up a connection from your Kerberos agents to your Kerberos vaults. So what you, you just have to give a, a account a name. You select the provider you want to store with this the number of days that you want to store the data, so data retention, and then you generate some keys and these keys then can be shared with your Kerberos agent. So once this is done, you will get some credentials, for example, these credentials, and then you can share this with your agent. So how does that, does that look like? You go to your factory installation, you click on settings, we have the global settings page and then you select the persistence uh, setting. 
So in here, you can select Kerberos Hub or Kerberos Vault. With Kerberos Vault, you will need the API URL of your, your vault. So that's easy. You can just open the Swagger API docs and you have the API. So you just copy paste it. You need to have the provider name. So the provider name is what you can find here. Oh. And then you provide a directory where to store. So in, the, in which subdirectory of the provider and the access key and secret key. You click, you click verify connection, see green box, and you know that it's working. So once that is done, every agent that you will create will automatically inherit the setting and will start sending its recordings centrally in your storage provider. So it's bringing everything together and Kerberos Vault is then responsible for storing it in the right storage provider and also uh, to do other tasks like data retention and so on. It doesn't stop here um, because this is just storing data. You also want to integrate with your own services so therefore we have the additional management tab which we call integrations and what you can do here is similar to storage providers you can add connections integrations so what this can mean is a message broker like sqs or kafka broker or you can set up a connection with a remote vault or you can send it to uh, our Kerberos hub application which you will see in future recordings what is the idea with the uh, brokers, the message brokers, is that uh, once an event or once a recording is being uploaded to Kerbal's Vault and it's successfully stored into your storage provider, this will trigger a message. This will create a message in a Kafka broker, for example, in a specific topic. And it will tell the, uh, it, it, in the message you will find which recording was stored from which camera, which user, what timestamp, region of interest, and so on. So all kind of metadata that will be pushed into a queue. And the idea is then you with your own extension can read from the Kafka broker from the topic, and you will know in real time that a new recording was being uploaded. So that's the beauty and also a nice way of benefiting from a scalable, stable system that allows you to scale and distribute your video surveillance system. And on the other side, you as a data scientist or a computer vision engineer, you just receive recordings on the fly. So that being said, I will dive a little bit more deeper in the, into the in, in different examples on the documentation website. But basically that's what it does. You add storage providers, you create integrations if you have your own use case and you make it available through an account that allows you to connect your agents to Kerberos Vault. So once that's done, you have a central storage on the storage that you want, Vault is managing the data retention and you can build your own use cases. So that's great. And um, what's even, even better is that again, all these uh, functionalities are also exposed through Swagger APIs. Similar to Kerberos Factory and Kerberos Hub, you have the uh, ability to to make your own automate automations and in the end you could decide not to use the UI and just script everything using one of these APIs so that's possible voila um, again we have the, the documentation website we have a dedicated github repository as well so in here you find examples for example uh, the main purposes and uh, some use cases, for example, can also be found here. Uh, this contains the deployment file, so that's required for the installation. You'll find here, and so on. So, um, yeah, it, it really has its own repository and lifecycle, so the, that's also great. So, if we go back to the documentation, uh, this is the, the tool, right? Um, then we are also explaining various use cases like, okay, which providers do you have? Which integrations do we have? And how, what does that actually mean? For example, to integrate Corporal Vault, how do you need to do this? Uh, which attributes do you need? And so on. We have a dedicated page for machine learning uh, where we explain a very specific problem that we are solving. Um, just. I would just say like, yeah, just read through it. I think it's it's interesting. It's 
explains a couple of challenges that data scientists have nowadays and how we try to solve them using a concept of video chunking and, and queuing um, so that we can low balance or distribute recordings to multiple GPUs and not a single GPU per camera, for example. And at bottom line, what we actually try to do is uh, we try to make data scientists do data science and not focus on, on the infrastructure. So we want to take away the complexity once you go with a video analytics landscape uh, and you want to scale this or you want to process or you want to apply machine learning algorithms on thousands of cameras. That's really our main purpose. Then we have uh, two other concepts like forwarding and recycling. Recycling is easy. It's just you can define on, on an account level how long you would like to store the recordings on your storage provider. And this is some kind of cleaner process. And also we have the, the forwarding principle explained, which is uh, quite interesting for various use cases. And uh, this is typically how it works. So we have your agents at the edge. We have a vault at the edge. We could do some machine learning, for example, on 24 and seven recorded videos. And then depending on the machine learning, the outcome, whatever use case that we have, we can decide to only forward a subset of recordings. So this vault will have cloud storage. This vault will have edge storage and the cloud storage will just have like 10% of the recordings of, of the edge storage. We can build alerts then and all kinds of notifications into the hub. But the really the main benefit is to be more cost efficient. And instead of forwarding everything into the cloud, do filter at the edge and then less uh, send less data over the network. So less, uh, less bandwidth. We have different forms of forwarding, continuous on demand. So it means that you build your own integration to do that and so on. Um, I think that's it guys. Um, so the license, the, the great thing is that the solution is also not like Kerbal's factory. It's, um, you don't need any license. So, uh, it's closed source, but you can use it for any kind of use case. And again, this is because we don't want to drag you in a license discussion. We just want, we first want to confirm or allow you to test this within your environment so that you uh, are sure that you, you can use this. So thank you so much for, for listening. Uh, this was uh, a recording about Kerbal's Vault and I hope you learned something that this allows you to um, test it out or if you have any more questions, feel free to drop a message on this uh, YouTube video. See you soon, bye bye.